Okay, my friends, I'm going to show you right now. I believe that Jupiter is going to give birth to another planet. It gave birth to Venus long ago. This is the planetary society, and they know that it's changing. The shape is changing, and I'm going to explain to you the different speeds and the pressures and all that stuff. Now, this goes back to 2021, about a year ago. The shape of Jupiter's great red spot is changing. Here's why. Now, they're going to explain their take on it, and I'm going to explain mine. All right, they will figure out something to say, but here's the deal. A new study published in the Journal of Geophysics Research letter adds yet another piece of Jupiter's puzzle in the Great Red Spot. The winds in its outermost stretches are speeding up and its shape is changing, becoming less cigar shaped and more circular. And the winds on the inside are just almost nothing. And the, they're sensing a depth is extremely deep, which they had never realized before. Now, does this mean the Great Red Spot is doomed? Not exactly, but some scientists involved in the latest research said they weren't expecting what they found, and a concrete explanation is proving elusive. Well, I have a concrete one, and it's not elusive at all. Okay, here's why it's changing. Listen to this. This is crazy. They talk about it's changing. There's no question. Nobody had predicted what was actually going on. So, here's the red spot here. And it's changing in size and the speed of the winds. All kinds of things are happening. It says, what is the great red spot? Well, we know what it is. Now, why is the great red spot red? Well, they have some ideas, but literally and figuratively, they have no idea. We don't know what chemical compounds make it red and so forth. Now, how about the great red spot's winds changing? In a word, unevenly. They just know they're changing. They, it's, the outside is going real fast. The inside is going, getting slower. And I can explain that too. It's because it's mounding up. This is called the Venus Mound. Mons pubis. All right, there it is right there. So they really they don't have any idea about this. All right, now. Let's see the next thing they have to say. What is causing the winds of the great red spot to speed up and slow down? There doesn't seem to be an easy answer, no explanation for this. At least not with the tools of our disposal right now. Well, yes, I can tell you what it is. Is the great red spot going to disappear forever? At this point, it's anybody's guess. I mean, it's just that they have any idea what's going on. No idea. And I can tell you exactly what's going on. It's just what Velikovsky said. It, it gave birth 3,500 years ago, and I believe it's going to do it again. It certainly looks like it to me. Now, I'm going to explain to you the changes that they have observed, and we're going to go through their video and some other videos and maybe some documents showing and speaking about these changes and, you know, the wind speeds and all that business. Okay, my friends, this is going to be a ramble. And it's going to be about my hero, Emanuel Velikovsky, who wrote Worlds in Collision and several other books about our ancient history. And he claims, and the whole world claimed, not just him, and all the ancient texts virtually, they had the same story. And they said that Jupiter spawned Venus. At that time, it was a fiery comet, 3,500 years ago. And it, it spit out of there and almost hit Earth twice. Now, he has all of these recorded histories, and they, have still, they still hate him today because he made all these statements. Now, I'm, we're going to go through this a little bit at a time, but he, here's his statements. Rather than all the nonsense we heard about how everything's stable, he says, in his scheme, Venus took the form of a huge rogue comet after being ejected by Jupiter. Now, I know why it would, because it would be spinning backwards, first of all, which it is, creating enormous amounts of heat, which it is, it's still like over 900 degrees, because it's spinning backwards. It's like scrubbing its tires going down the street this way, instead of, here, okay, let me just show you something. This is what you have to understand about Venus. The right-hand rule says everybody rolls down the street, just going just right down the street as they go down through the universe. That's the right-hand rule. 
Well, if they get, if they have to go this way, being pulled on the arm in the Milky Way, so they're going to be rubbing against the particles that they hit this way. Well, if Venus is going backwards, which it is, it still has to go in the same direction. It still has to rub against the same particles, and it's rubbing backwards, steaming the hell out of it. It's like your tire's going down the road backwards, but you still have to go down the road the same direction. They're going to smoke. All right, so Venus is smoking. No. He said that it was a rogue comet, fiery rogue comet, ejected by Jupiter not long before 1500 B.C. That's 3,500 years ago. It hurled sunward, side-swiping Earth twice in its orbit and colliding with Mars before settling into the almost perfect circular orbit it occupies now. This was all recorded. This is not just Velikovsky making these claims. The basis for all this astounding historical recent chaos wasn't a detailed computation of orbital motion, which states, oh, you got to, to make it work with pi r squared d nonsense. It was Velikovsky's unwavering belief, the Old Testament narrative, cosmological myths drawn from China, Central America, India, Assyria, and elsewhere, all over the world, were accounts of real events. Well, duh! Who would think to know? Everybody in the whole world made this up at the same story at the same time. People didn't even know each other. It was his unwavering belief in this nonsense. Well, yes versus computational orbitation, orbital motions. This is all absolutely nonsense. And then they say, well, hey, what got him started was his biblical story of Joshua. No, that didn't get him started. His, what got him started was the ancient stories that talked about the feared God Jupiter gave birth to the fiery planet Venus. That's what it said in the ancient text. It wasn't him that said that. And then he found that everybody else said they had the same stories. Now, it goes on and on here about the... Here, listen to this. Joshua commanded the sun and the moon to stop moving for an entire day and invoking a devastating hail of stones from the sky during his battle with the Amorites. Velikovsky was also seeking a physical reason for the plagues inflicted on the Egyptians in Exodus. Yes, just as I have. And they're all accounted for by a literal vaginal birth of a planet, including the blood, which reigned all over Earth at this point. And they were hydrocarbons, because as they boil coming through the space, they turn into hydrocarbon gases and oils and so forth. In addition to that, so the red blood came down, hydrocarbons, stones fell like crazy everywhere because that's the umbilical cord breaking into these little tiny segments. Very, very hard stuff, the umbilical cord. And then, after all that happened, the, the manna fell, which is the placenta, which is what the baby's been feeding on, turned into like flakes of, of um, like wafers. And that's what they ate, ate in the desert. All that stuff is accounted for by a literal vaginal birth. And I'm going to tell you right now, that great red spot on, on Venus, I mean on um, Jupiter, is a vagina. And it's about ready to give birth again, it appears. I've been following this carefully because it's turning round instead of like a, a, a shape like that. It's turning round now, which indicates it's about ready to go. All right, this is NASA, and they're out looking at the storm up on, um, see, this is NASA Goddard Space Center. Now, this is what they're looking at is the wind speeds. Now, look what it says. The winds on the outermost edge of the storm have increased 8% from 2009 to 2020, only on the outside edge. Well, guess what? The ones on the inside edge have slowed down. See, this says, in contrast, the winds near the storm's innermost region are moving significantly slower now. You see, they're hardly moving at all. 
and I can tell you exactly why because that thing is bumping up it's not see this is 1994-95 let me just stop for one second it says Hubble precisely yearly readings astronomers monitor in a great red spot increasing speed well the speed increases as the bump bumps out more all it is is it's com coming past here and swirling it's not a big storm in here it's because this is a mound it's called the Venus Mons the Venus Mound All right, and it is bumped up and it's getting rounder and rounder because I believe it's about ready to give birth again it increases as a mystery well not to me this baby's getting ready to make a baby that's what I'm seeing I'm just gonna look, cut the little bits and pieces and I'll play this whole thing in a minute it says this is a mystery and now they're showing this important data helps us understand what powers the great red spot and how it maintains its energy it's a bump I want to know can they tell the the height All right they want to find out more about this well so do I but I can tell you it's not what they think it is All right, you see, just think about this Jupiter is going this way very 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 fast let's say 400 miles an hour our earth as we spin we're going a thousand miles an hour as we spend in a 24-hour day, 1,000 miles an hour. 400 miles an hour is not, I mean, this is even much bigger. I don't know how long it takes to spin. I'd have to do some calculations. But I can tell you what, 400 miles an hour is no problem whatsoever. This is a bump. All right, here's what's going on. you got a bump right there. And it's, first of all, it was kind of flat. And this was, it circles around but it's because of this this atmosphere bumping into this bump it's turning this way it's swishing that's not this here it's this that's swishing and the same thing underneath you see it here pushing up this is a mound this is not a storm this is the this stuff has to get away from this mound. It's called the Venus Mons, the mound of Venus, which is the tissue directly above the vagina. They knew what this was, and it is a vagina. Okay, this time I'm going to play this through without my commentary. It's NASA Goddard. Hubble observes Jupiter's great red spot changing. Don't forget, it's turning around, and to me that signifies it's getting ready to birth another planet, which it did, Venus, 3,500 years ago. Okay, that's, <laughs> it's pretty obvious to me that we could be having a new neighbor before long, which if it follows the same path that Venus did, we could be in trouble. Depends on where it gives birth to in its cycle and where it goes to. I mean, it hit Mars last time and destroyed Mars. Mars was a living planet just like Earth was. I've looked at this very carefully. I've studied all of their missions to Mars and and the, the rover footage, and it, it was just exactly like Earth was at one time. It had all the same bio, biology. So how would you like to wake up one morning and see a fiery comet heading towards Earth the size of Earth? Because that's probably what it's going to have, another planet-sized planet. Okay, my friends, I, I've been interrupted at least a half a dozen times, so I don't know where I've been, I don't know what I've already said, but I'm just going to start rambling. This is a video by NASA, all right, Goddard Space Center. This is Jupiter, and it's spinning this way. This is Jupiter's red spot, which is changing shape now. And it's changing shape, which causes the cloud formations to spin at more speed and so forth, and less speed in the center, because it's coming out as a mound. Because I believe it is going to begin going to have, give birth. Now, this is, like I say, NASA Hubble observes Jupiter's great red spot changing and they don't know what to make of it. 
Okay, now again, that I'm telling you, that is a vagina, and, and and it is raising up as a mound now. And the ancients called this mons pubis, which means the Venus mound, Venus mound, which is part of the vagina. It sits right on top of the vagina. It's the fleshy part right above the vagina. It's called the mons pubis venous mound and it is rising up now because there's some pressure internally and it's turning round instead of elongated because it is about to open to have a baby. Is my a baby planner. Now, I've got this run in half speed. Now, don't forget, Velikovsky recorded this happened before. This is not new. This happened before. And that's what almost wiped all the earth, um, all the uh, life on earth almost died. Everybody knows the story, the Great Flood, and this is what happened. It almost impacted Earth, and it did impact Mars and killed everything on Mars, which was just about as alive as Earth. Now watch what happened. I got this running at half speed. Now let's look at really carefully what's going on. The planet's spinning this way. All the clouds have to pass by this fixture. Well, it's coming out and getting bigger now. So the clouds are wrapping and spinning around it. Same thing on the bottom. This isn't the thing that's spinning. This is the thing that's stationary. And they said in the middle there's almost no movement at all. And it, it's rising, and that's what's going on. Now listen, I, there, there's no sound, so. But that's the great red spot. Now, like I said, I have this running half speed. All right, Jupiter's most iconic feature, the great storm known as the Great Red Spot. Now, they keep playing this old clip over and over and over, but you can see what's going on. All right, it's coming into this, and it's forcing it to come around and swirl over here. This is not the thing. No, it says the storm spins at up to 400 miles an hour. The outside of it spins, but not the inside, and it's not spinning at all. All right, so now watch what happens here. 1800, they observed the storm many times, but no one knows when it began. It's always been there because it's a bodily part. Now, this was spinning. Jupiter spins this way. And the cloud formation swirls away from it this way. Now, see what it says for more than a century, they noted it shrinking in size and becoming more circular than oval. Now, I don't know how long it takes to birth a planet. How long did Noah have noticed that they were going to have a baby? <laughs> I don't know. Because right? that's when Venus came. Hubble's deployment in 1990 gave them even clearer annual views of Jupiter. But they, I think it's since 2009 they've really noticed a big change. So they're out there looking at it carefully, and here it is spinning and so forth. Like I said, I got this running half speed, so it's a little bit slower. They started to notice something strange, right? They started to notice something strange. And here it is again, all of those clouds rippling off. Now, here's the key. I'm going to talk to you about this. I'm stopping it now. The winds on the outermost edge of the storm have increased by 8% from 2009 to 2020. 8%, that is a lot. And why? It's because it's still spinning. The whole planet is spinning this way. That is rubbing off the top this way. As it comes out bigger and bigger, it's got to spin faster and faster. So it's spinning up to 8% faster. But the inside is not. The inside isn't spinning faster at all. It's almost tranquil. All right, so the outside is spinning very fast now. Increased by 8%. And that's only in the last 10 years. And they noticed this. And, you know, they're sort of keeping an eye on it, but I don't think well enough. Now, what they say, so it's spinning fast. Now, this, in contrast, the winds near the storm center in the innermost region are moving significantly slower. That's just because it's raising up. It's spinning around here. It's not this spinning. This is becoming bigger and getting ready to pop a baby out of there, a baby planet. But when I say a baby planet, you see how it's elongated and it's getting crunchier and crunchier? 
and still elongated, still elongated, still elongated. Now it's getting a little tighter and tighter, and it's almost turned around. You see? Rounder and rounder and rounder. Very round now. Very, very round now. Very, very round now. All right, so look at how round that is now. While this increase is a mystery, well, yes and no. All right, they're showing all these different variations, but it's the clouds are just becoming more and more swirly the higher that mound gets, the Venus mound, the mons pubis. That's exactly what they call it, the female vagina. The mons pubis is right up here. It's right above the, cl the clitoris area. And the bottom is down here. And that is the vagina. And the wind is spinning around here faster and faster because it is swelling. And that's what happens. You know what happens to a woman's anatomy when they're about to have a baby. And they say this important data helps them understand the great red spot. But they really don't understand it because they just think it's a, a storm. It is not. And how it maintains this energy and powers itself and all that. And uh, they, they really want to understand this stuff. But they really don't want to look and say, let me just take a look at this. Let me see if there's any, any possibility this could be true. Could the ancients have actually written the truth? We consider everything a myth. But they were the ones that I witnessed it. And, and Velikovsky wrote about, wrote about it, and he was destroyed. Just like all my research has been basically destroyed by, by people that want to say this is crazy. And it is. It's crazy. I didn't say it wasn't crazy. I'm just saying it's true. Like I said, I got interrupted a bunch of times, so I don't know if I went through this deeply. But if I didn't, I probably will. It says, for Velikovsky... In his scheme, Venus took the form of a huge rogue comet, which later turned into the planet Venus, after being ejected by Jupiter from the red spot, not long before 1500 BC. That's 3,500 years ago. It hurled sunward, sideswiping Earth twice, colliding with Mars before settling into its orbit now, which is it's okay now. It's not bothering us now. But it took a while to find that because it just popped out of one that's had an orbit. And then now it's got to find its own orbit, and you just hope it's not going to hit us. All right, so maybe I went through this, maybe I didn't. And I think I went through, well, I know I, I'm showing the same thing about the um, Mesopotamia there, the... Um, you know, the uh, Euphrates and Tigris and Euphrates River, that's a cradle of civilization. All right, that was supposedly the land that was going to be the most fertile, and it is. And I'll show you why. I already have shown you why. And uh, many, many times. But until somebody starts to pay attention, I'm just going to keep doing it over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. All right, this is the secrets of the universe, and it's a saying about NASA. NASA finally shows what's inside Jupiter's great red spot. Now, they have some information here that, again, I'm fair user, fair use doctrines means I'm not trying to steal it. I'm just talking against this with my interpretation of what they're saying. So let's get into it and see what they have to say, because they went into a little more detail than NASA did. But... They say, they finally show what's inside. Okay, I'm just going to cut in and show you visuals. It's gone from oval to circular. That's what they've seen. It was like this one. Now, and it's raising up, causing an, 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 an enormous amount of interaction against the oncoming winds. Because the whole thing is spinning in its atmosphere, and the atmosphere is coming at it, and it's a bump in that atmosphere. It can't just go, so it has to get around it. So it just takes it, boom. and in the center, it's no big deal because it's rising up over this condensed, and they know that the, the, the atmosphere condenses. It's a very heavy, attractive planet, so all the atmosphere is heavy-duty atmosphere close to, your, to the surface. Okay, NASA has a spacecraft up there that's continuously monitoring this red spot to see what's going on. It's, it's in orbit around there, and it's um, monitoring.
Okay, just recently they found out that it's not only just a big red spot, it's deep. It's way deep. Okay, again, secrets of the universe, and here they are. That red spot is deep, it's so deep that it's twice as deep as the space station is high in the sky. <laughs> You'd have to go twice as deep to get to the bottom. Well, they don't even know where the bottom is, but here goes. How did scientists measure the depth of the great red spot? And what did they see happening in there? Qu okay, so here we go. They're starting to ask questions. Is How did scientists measure the depth of the great red spot? And what did they see happening in there? Questioning is an important part of understanding something. And that's why I would like to tell you about the sponsors of this video. On Academy. What if I told you you could ask about any problem from your book and get its solution instantaneously? Wow, I'd love to hear them give me a solution about the things I'm asking about. Why is the th biology everywhere? This is interesting. Okay, they discovered that the depth of this vagina is like twice as deep as the space station is high. It's so deep, they had no clue. Now, this is uh, probably Europa, one of their uh, moons in the background. Great now. red spots gravity. They wanted to know if the storm's gravity was influencing Jupiter in any way. The idea was simple. Juno's gravity science instrument was turned to the 16,000 kilometer wide storm to see if it left behind any fingerprints on Jupiter's gravitational field. This is what I want to see. Is this rising up? I say it's rising up. It's actually that mound is rising up. That's why the, the wind speed has to increase. It has to. You have to put more surface area up in the air, you have to increase the wind speed. No, no other alternative. And it is increased by 8%. That's this the field assessment I was see. not a part of the original Juno proposal. However, investigating a planet's gravity to study its atmosphere is not new. A couple of NASA satellites have done the same on Earth. Gravity instruments can also see deeper into the atmosphere than other instruments tend to see. This just had never been done with the Great Red Spot. The assignment was a gamble. Scientists were not sure that they would find something substantial the Great Red Spot might be a giant, but it's a drop in the bucket of Jupiter's total mass. But the researchers did indeed pick up fluctuations in Jupiter's gravitational field, enough for them to get a handle on the storm's depth. All right, there you go. The, if it's wobbling a little bit, apparently that's what they're saying, it is bumping up more than likely. 500 kilometers. And the great storm seems to be fed Whoops. by jets that reach far deeper, as much as 3,000 kilometers. While the first team probed the spot by making gravitational measurements, the second team explored the storm using Juno's microwave radiometer. It's I want to know, is it bumped up? An instrument that probes the planet's atmosphere with microwaves. These scientists wanted to look deep into the storm to see how it ticked vertically. They found that the Great Red Spot and other such storms on Jupiter stretch far down, with participation in drafts at unprecedented depths. In addition, they found signatures of these phenomena below Jupiter's cloud level, beneath which the ammonia and water in the atmosphere are expected to condense. Together, the gravity and microwave measurements hint that Jupiter's upper atmosphere is meaningfully connected to these depths. The Great Red Spot is actually an anti-cyclone raging on Jupiter. It's actually a vagina, and as this Jupiter spins, it is attached to Jupiter, so it's got to spin along. These clouds are coming at it, and that's what's causing them to spin this way. Same thing with here, it's hitting it and it's spinning this way. These different stripes here are the different impact zones, just like the sun has. And I'll show you in a second. As it spins, it creates a magnetic field right here, another one right here, and another one right here. And that's what keeps these zones separated. Just exactly what I'll show you on the sun. All right, again, same place, secrets of the universe. They're going to start talking about these 
red and white bands. And, you know, let's see what they have to say. ...and anti-cyclones. Jupiter is known for its distinctive belts and zones, white and reddish bands of clouds that wrap around the planet. Strong east-west winds moving in opposite directions separate the bands. Juno previously discovered that these winds, or jet streams, reach depths of about 3,200 kilometers. Researchers are still trying to solve the mystery of how jet streams form. However, data collected by Juno's instruments during multiple passes reveal one possible clue. All right, I'm just going to show you how they do form. They're exactly the same way as the sun forms. It's because the particles it's scrubbing into create magnetic fields that separate them. Here, here's the sun. All right, this is the sun behind the moon. It's a s solar eclipse. So we can see all the radiation now very clearly. You never can see this because you're getting bombarded by particles. What are we seeing? The sun is spinning this way. And I'm certain of that because of these impact zones. Just like we saw Jupiter. And it had its stripes. A stripe here, a stripe here, a stripe here. That's what it's doing. It's impacting, creating this field. See the field? I drew it. But I'll, I'll erase this and you'll see. These are magnetic fields. They push each other field away from each other. All right? And they create their own fields. Now, those particles are so excited, they're taking off and they are never coming home. They're gone. They're go going as light towards Earth, towards wherever they go. Same thing here, same thing here. And these are being stripped off too as... As it spins this way, these are just sort of trailing and coming off. But these are impacting as well as the sun apparently is going in this direction and it's impacting like this. And these, this is the impact zone, this is the trail zone. This is the magnetic field zones. That's the polar axis. All right, South Pole, North Pole, whatever. But that's the axis. Now, this doesn't have the fields like we have. They come out and they come back around and wrap around. You see those fields. This is so excited. The sun is so massive that those fields do not come back. They don't come back. They, that's what illuminates the universe is these, these events of these big masses interacting so violently. They're just extremely luminous. These are particles everywhere. And we have to f go through those particles just like the sun has to go through all the particles that everybody else emits. The sun, we're, we're all just part of a big pile of debris. And we're all swirling through it like a soup. This is, this is completely saturated with particles. The only reason you don't see them is because they're not concussing. They're in a dormant state. As soon as they hit something, just like this stuff is hitting those particles. What do you think it's doing? Why are we seeing that lit up? Why do you think that's happening? It's because there's particles it's smashing into. And eventually they sort of all say, okay, all right, take it easy. Everybody just fill yourself in. It's okay. And that's what happens way out here. But originally they're getting out. They're pushing like hell against it. And out here, out in this area right here, it's millions of degrees. On the surface of the moon, I mean the sun, it's only 10,000. But way out here, it's millions, because this is the area it has to break through, which is this, really what, you, what you're looking at right there, is the sun has an atmosphere, just like we have an atmosphere. It has an atmosphere. And its atmosphere is literally glued to the sun to some degree. And it's turbulent, and it's hurricanes and tornadoes and violent storms. The same thing we have on Earth. Because we have the same glued atmosphere. And as we spin through space and we have to go through all these heavy duty particles. Some days there's more particles, some days there's less. And we're, as we scrub through them, our storm goes like crazy. But here's what happened to Earth. There was just a certain amount of pressure in here, just like a balloon blown up yeah, halfway. And then all of a sudden we started burning so much stuff that, it, and now it's hard. This, this zone, I'm thinking, is more 
pressurize or it's out further either way it doesn't matter it's scrubbing harder and harder and harder and harder and we're getting more and more violent interaction with our atmosphere it causes all kinds of things floods hurricanes tornadoes global pattern shifts droughts freezing cold to coming real quick where it shouldn't moving down into the the lower areas, everything's changing. And it's changing because we have filled up our atmosphere so tight now from, from combustion that it's, it just can't handle it. The only way out is free energy. And, and I think there is actually a way of doing it. I've been showing it forever. And this is the way right here. It's using our venturi that created this high speed energy and then harvesting it on a solar panel just a cheap laser, free Venturi, and a cheap solar collector, put it into the same kind of stuff they use to harvest the energy right now and regulate it and all that. You don't need a grid, you carry it around your hand. These things are so tiny and the in increase in energy should be staggering. All right, so don't forget, I'm gonna wipe it down, but don't forget, these are the fields. The only thing that creates a field is a, is a magnetic push to shove. And they're spinning these particles that are on the sun against these particles just exactly like an electric motor does. So its particles are spinning its electrons against these electrons, and it's and it's creating this these fields. You see? Them? And the red spot means it's just extremely reactive, hard push. All right, all I'm going to do is tell you this. Stick with me, because I follow this stuff, as you know, very closely. I will give you the most updated information as to what I think is going on. And at the same time, we're going to find all this stuff is very interesting stuff. But I believe we could be seeing the birth of a new planet. And if that happens, and it is in the wrong position in the universe, or in the solar system, we could be in for another problem like they had that Velikowski described. Look up Emanuel Velikowski and uh, you'll see we've been through this before. 3,500 years ago, that's what created all the mud fossils and virtually basically about wiped out life on Earth. And it appears that these creatures were literally gods. And they could change their sizes and do everything they said in Metamorphosis by Ovid you got to do a little research on what these ancient people said. They weren't just trying to scare kids. They were writing down our history. And it was so spectacular that even then, they were run out of town. Herodotus, who was known as the father of history for his fabulous writings about historical information that he gathered traveling around when he came back to Sparta, he said, here's what I found. They, they exiled him from the, from the town. They said, don't ever come back here again. You're a liar. And now they call him the father of lies. They did the same thing to Velikovsky. He researched and did the actual research the academics refused to do. He presented it. They destroyed him. I can't present anything because I, I have nobody that will allow me to present anything. I can't write any papers. I can't do anything. Nobody will look at him. Nobody will respond. So, as far as that goes, all well, you're the only ones who are going to be seeing this stuff, because they've got me really in a corner now, totally shut down as far as being in the open about all of this. It's, you know, I have very few, you know, hits for this kind of information, and you put up a couple of puppies running around in the field, and you get hundred thousand hits. This is our eventuality. So I don't care who who you are; nobody gets out alive. If this is real, which I think it is, there's some really, 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 really bad things that can happen to you after you leave this physical body. That's the way I'm taking it. If they were all real stuff they wrote was, wrote was true, and it appears to be. All the physical things they wrote, as far as I'm concerned, are true. Spiritual, I don't know. I do not know. It's up to you to take into account, but I, there was things written that said there's only one way out of this life to make it out alive. 
or at least to make it out to a place where you're going to be happy being alive. <laughs> That's the problem. People don't, they think it's just a joke, it's all silly. Well, that's what I thought too. Until I found what I found. Now, it's up to you to do with what you see and what you think, because I'm on my own as far as I'm concerned. But I do want to bring this stuff forward. Nobody's thought about it. Nobody's ever even considered it to be possible. And I can tell you what, if you go to your professor and say, oh, what about this, what about this, they'll, throw, they'll, they'll try to ruin your life. This is, a, this is a shock. This is a shock to the system. But if you're open-minded and you can think and you say, look, if it's real, it's real. I don't care. If, if something's real, it's real. If you don't deal with something that's real, you're just deluded. You're what they say, perfectly happy, deluded. Right, Ph.D. Here, check this out. These reds, I mean, red is everywhere. And it looks like there might have been some old construction sites here. I don't think there's anybody there now. But watch this. I'm going to back out of here. Watch what I'm looking at. This is just basically blood. Basically bubbling blood. All right, and this whole area is saturated with blood right here. It's bubbling out of here. And you see it running down? It's running down the hill. Well, where do you think it's running to? Let's see where it's running to. Ooh, they're growing stuff there in the blood. <laughs> that's where they grow stuff. You grow stuff in blood. And that's what it's doing, running down the hill. It's 2,700 feet up here, and it's 2,300 down here or something like that. And all this blood is running out of whatever was there. It's still, it's still got some kind of bloody influence. Now this is the Tigris and Euphrates here. The, and I got to tell you something. The way it looks to me, this right here is the Tigris and Euphrates. And this is an anus. This area right down here, right in that area drained out. And these two areas, these two green spots, you see that? What's going on with that? There's some kind of snaky looking thing, some kind of snaky looking thing. They feed out and in. It feeds out and in. This one's nice and clear. This one's backed up. Let's take a closer look. Alright, here's this green looking, all kind of crazy looking green stuff in here. And then that feeds into this too. And that too runs out into the ocean, or whatever, the bay, or whatever this is right here. Now, then we get to where I say, this area right here is where the digestive system feeds out, which is, is an anus, basically. Now we got this exact same thing over here, only here we got some big brown things in the middle. It's not clear. And this looks inflamed. Remember over here... This is like, you know, a pretty average looking type, type of gland. <laughs> and it feeds right out into the ocean. No big deal. This one over here got some serious action going on. You see all this? This looks like it's inflamed or something. It's really nasty looking in there. And it's all inflamed around it. You see all around here inflamed looking? And then guess what happens? It goes to feed out into the ocean, and these are blocking it. I believe these two things right here are anal glands. And this one's backed up because of this stuff caught in the tu tubing. This one doesn't have any. It goes right out. No problem. This one's all blocked up. My dog just went to the vets yesterday to have his anal glands squished out. And what they do is they stick their finger up in his butt, I guess, this is what I'm told, and they just squeeze that and blow that all out. They must know how to exactly do it to work it out of there and get all that stuff out. Because he, he's, he was digging away at it and licking away like crazy. It was just crazy. But I believe those are both anal glands. That's what it looks like to me. And that right there is the butt.